For the past 25 years, Davidson has excelled both in the arts and academically. However, none of this would be possible without the hard work and dedication of its founders. Before Davidson was established, Augusta, Georgia was having problems drawing people into its downtown area. There was another problem. Schools in the area were segregated. The Richmond County Board of Education had to come up with a way to integrate black and white students into inner city schools. By the late 1970s, the concept for federally funded magnet schools came into consideration as a solution to these problems. Beverly Barnhart was interested in the concept and was hired to research and develop the idea. Magnet schools at the time where, where they were talking about it had just really surfaced. There were large cities that had developed schools with special themes, just like a magnet, to draw young people from other communities into areas that were not sometimes the most desirable areas. So, you know, I thought, well, if the big cities can do it, could we do it? And I'd talked to a variety of people, even though there was no literature at that time available. And because of that, I wrote a grant for me to research it. And I got to travel around the United States and actually went around and saw maybe seven or eight different locations. I reported to the superintendent and to the board. They asked me to survey to find out what the community might want. So I devised a survey in cooperation with one of my professors at UGA. And um, we surveyed and we received amazingly over 70% of our survey back. After compiling the responses, the school board decided that three magnet schools should be established. The first would be a traditional magnet school known as C.T. Walker. The second, A.R. Johnson, would focus on math and science. The third was to be a fine arts school with quality education. In 1980, the first two magnet schools, C.T. Walker and A.R. Johnson, were opened. A year later, in 1981, the fine arts magnet school was opened in the John S. Davidson Elementary School building on Telfair Street. After I finally got approval for everything, I thought, how in the world am I going to do this? <laughs> Mrs. Beverly Barnhart took the role as principal and the first students went through an audition emphasizing their fine art. You were not chosen because you were a straight A student. You were chosen because the compilation of the uh, audition. Young people get into a school where they know what's expected of them. They study, they do their homework, and they're involved in the fine arts. Those young people begin shining. There was still a problem. Some citizens in the community did not quite understand Davidson and what it was about. The fine arts area to me was the most difficult to get the general community to understand. It was not the normal walking, marching band. It, it, it was a lot more to it. When you performed, you performed. You had no choice, you were to perform. Mrs. Barnhart's hope for success was realized when in its second year a survey was taken by a private research company which ranked Davidson top magnet school in the nation. The school had already exceeded expectations. When Davidson first opened, we were fifth through eighth grade and there were 500 students here, so every year after that we added one grade. And so finally in the year 85, 86, that was when we had our first graduation class. The dance was on the uh, auditorium stage. We also used the lunchroom for one of the dance studios before lunch and after lunch. One classroom that they taught geometry in where the students just pile their book bags in the middle of the floor and they sat around facing a wall and that was the only way they could fit everybody in. That old school got a little tight around the waistline as, as we grew over there. The kids made do with so little. They practiced their instruments in the hallway and their plays in the hallway. It was overcrowded, it was small. It was an elementary building. It was a converted elementary building. To compensate for the increase in the number of students, the Board of Education purchased portables in an old auto repair building to temporarily expand the school. Not only was the school not big enough, but the building on Telfair had many physical problems and was literally not holding up. An umbrella has always been important to a Davidson student. There was one performance one night and 
the storms were raging outside and all of a sudden, I guess part of the roof outside just decided to give up the ghost. And we had a waterfall in that auditorium in the other building. If it rained, the first thing I did when I opened the school that morning was to get the trash cans out and put them wherever the water was pouring down. We'd sit through theater performances and big chunks of plaster would fall on our heads. There were morning doves cooing on the second floor <laughs> because they were flying around throughout the classrooms and up in the attic. And every spring we had termites. I mean, every spring. The heat was gas and you had to turn it on occasionally and it would get so hot in there that you'd have to turn it off and then you'd freeze again. There was no happy medium. We just did as best we could and made do and you'd teach wherever there was a space. And I literally did teach wherever there was a space. But you know what, it taught me how to teach. We adapted and at that time, we were still one of the best high schools in the state. Even with portables and the annex, Davidson was still too big for the building. We really, truly needed a new building. The board had been promising us and, and putting us as number one on their list of priorities for years. By the late 1980s, the Board of Education began looking for a new piece of property. B.J. Annis, who was a board member, and Jerry Brigham saw a piece of property. And they went back to the board and said they have the right property. We ended up with the property and the board decided they would, what did I want first? Did I want to do an academic building or did I want to do an art building, but they couldn't do it all? Well, I decided that we would have the art building first. The primary goal there was to save an old building that was built turn of the century and, and to restore it, but put it to a new use. In 1992, the new art building was open and on November 1st, a dedication ceremony took place. But I want to share so something with you because it's such a pleasure and a joy just to celebrate and dedicate Davidson Fine Arts School's first building on our future site. We've been waiting 12 years for this moment. As the art building was being dedicated, the plans to complete the rest of the campus were already underway. I'll never forget the time I got a call from Ms. Barnhart over the summer and she said, I need for you to come to school immediately because we finally have the funds for our school and we need to start accruing supplies and making decisions for the architect and things like that. This project was one of the most fun projects I ever got to work on. I'm not an expert in the arts, but I did a lot of study into the arts to try to learn what to do for the spaces in this school. Construction probably went on for a uh, year and a half, um, so it, it added up to a long project. We would sit here in this art building <laughs> and watch as, you know, it just seemed like years passed. Construction of the new building was completed in 1997. Then in 1998, Davidson moved permanently from the Telfair building to the 12th Street campus. The space has huge ceilings and openness and it just feels like a professional atmosphere. And the kids couldn't believe it. They, they were really just dumbfounded. Just two years after the move, Mrs. Barnhart retired. Many parents and others in the community were concerned with what might happen to Davidson after she left and who would take her place. Chosen to be the new principal was one-time assistant principal James Thompson. During Mr. Thompson's leadership, Davidson had one of its most notable awards when the music department was awarded a Grammy for having the best high school music program in the United States. There were many more honors, you know, other than those, but always at the top, and Davidson at the top now, so those are some of the things that I remember. When Mr. Thompson left in 2004, Miss Vicki Addison was chosen to be the new principal. Under Miss Addison, Davidson continues to maintain its high standards of quality education and just this year achieved the National Magnet School Award of Excellence. We are being contacted by people all, ar all around the state of Georgia that want to come here and see what we do and how we do it. My wife and I have been just really supremely delighted to see our children attend here, to uh, see what they've learned, the opportunities to do, explore the different arts that are here. and. Um, and to develop their talents. I've just enjoyed seeing so many creative students come through the art department. It's been a great place to see art being created and 
see what students, I mean, the, the different things that everybody can create is wonderful. I have adored every second I've taught here, even through the stresses and the changes and everything that, that I've gone through. I've, it's been an incredibly gratifying experience. To see the students in the academic setting and also in the fine arts setting and the success and the, the, the joy, so to speak, that they have in what they're doing, the, my Davidson experience was, was very rewarding to me. The quality of the education overall is, is it's not just the arts, it's the overall quality that, that uh, Ms. Barnhart started and others have continued. It's uh, set a real precedence. Um. I like having a smaller school. Every single human being is worthy of, of being noticed and doing the best and be, give, and be given the best education possible. This school is unlike any other school that I have ever worked in. There is a spirit about the school, and there is a culture in the school of excellence. And so that is one of the secrets, I think, to what makes Davidson such a great school.